Okay, it is seven o'clock. Time to call this meeting to order. I will stand for pledge of allegiance. <laughs> Father, we ask you to be with us this evening as we look at things that need to be done to help move our community forward, help us to make wise judgments, good decisions, and go home happy and satisfied. And we ask these things in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Here. Ms. Peeble? Here. Mr. Dunphy? Here. Mr. Sherman? Here. Mr. Dunphy? Here. Mr. Dunphy? Yeah. All right, has everyone had a chance to review the minutes from the last regular meeting? Any council discussion on said minutes? Yes, um, the last sentence I, I believe should be removed from the minutes. Okay. Thank you. All right, uh, motion to approve. Second. Yes, Mr. Duffy? Yes. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Mr. Booth? Yes. Ms. Yes. Yes. Okay. Now we're on to interview and vote for the council member. Do you want to do that an executive or do you want to do it here? Here. Here? Okay. All right. All right. Who's first? We have three candidates Mr. Flowers, Mr. Brooks, and Mr. Taylor. Whoever would like to <clears throat> be first, please take the podium. Go ahead. Sure. That's fine. <clears throat> All right. Um, just tell us uh, your address and the reason why you will be a council member, and then we'll have some questions. Sure. Uh, Corey Taylor, 556 Verity Street, Nelson, Ohio. Um, I did put in to fill the vacancy. Um, I'm only seeking for from now until November. I'm not. I'm not going to be running in the, in the fall. Um, but uh, my intent is to try to help set council uh, back on the right path. Get a city manager in here that we can get under a contract. So regardless of who gets elected in the fall, uh, we have some continuity. Um, and I want to make sure that uh, we're able to continue to get our projects done that we need to be. We have right now we have a, a trash contract that's about to expire that we should be discussing uh, right now, and we're not. Um, that's going to take some time, but. So I'd like to get involved and get that stuff going again. Um, and I obviously have that experience with that, with those contracts. But <clears throat> that's all I'm seeking to do is just to right the ship and get things back on the right path and moving forward. Any questions for Mr. Taylor? Mr. Taylor, you had a position on council sure until January when you resigned. I did. Why did you resign? That's the first time someone's asked me that, and I appreciate you asking because Everybody's, you know, trying to make a bad thing like I resigned. I'm not the only one who resigned. I think there's I'll, a lot of people. I'm aware about that. Um, there's quite a few people that resigned. Yes, we have a revolving door. <clears throat> yes, but I think the question is why, right? Yes. So why are people? Why were people resigning? No, why did you resign in January? I understand. I understand the question, but I'm just saying it's bigger than yes. just me alone. Yes, but right now I'm interested in why sure. you resigned in January. Okay. So I resigned because, and I was even quoted in the paper in my email. It's hard to, uh, it's hard to, you know, do your job when the system is rigged. So in my opinion, we have people that don't live in the city that are not politicians in the city that had more power and authority and control over our city and decisions that were being made in our city, and so. It didn't matter, right? Some people said, well, you, you had more control over that when you were sitting on the council. That's actually not true. I actually have more power here sitting as a citizen than I do behind that desk. So the fact is, I have a greater voice here. But I resigned because of that, because you've got people that are undermining the everyday authority of a city manager. You know, those are employees, those are people within the city, those are people outside of the city that have some authority within a county that are now putting pressure and power you know it's, it's all about a game of power and we don't need that here all we need is to be able to check the boxes 
get you know the infrastructure fixed, get the projects completed, so we can move forward. We don't need the politics. <laughs> so, so I left. I left because of the, the collusion and the and the corruption that was happening within the city uh, from other politicians, along with some people on council that undermined the city manager that was actually doing a really good job. I know people didn't like him, they say, right? We got people that didn't care for him, but the reality is he was getting more done in that right. three-year period I, I, than any other city manager before. All right. But he's not here. He, he was forced to resign for various reasons, but um, you said you want to write the ship. Yeah, well, if you had stayed on council, you have to be That's a good question, sir. If you Ooh. had, Man. you oh. said, oh. excuse me. Everybody I've got the floor here. That's right. Ms. Thank you. Mr. Taylor, yep. my question was, you said you want to write the ship. Correct. If you left the ship, what makes it even better for you to come back now? Why well, would you have stayed and writing the ship? Yeah, I think that's a good question. I have a better opportunity, I think, right now to come back and write the ship. I didn't at that point. You could, it, what, I would think that the ship could have been righted at that point. And, and I'm not the only one, obviously, you thought that, right? If other people resigned even after me, correct? So if that's the case, you know, I'm coming back because I actually think I have an opportunity to write that ship. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be here otherwise. I've never come here for power or for anything other than trying to benefit the city. I've always been all in for, sit, for the city. That's that's the fact. You, my record proves that. We've gotten so much done in that time frame. The reality is, though, okay, we have folks on here that are not for the city. They're for themselves. You're saying people on this council now. I'm saying when I was on council. But not now. Not all the people, not all the same. The faces are the same. I'm, I'm aware of that fact. But my question is, are there? Are you saying people on council now are working against the good of the city? I don't think necessarily now. I would say some yes. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say all of them, but I would say <laughs> But some, some people on this council are not working for the good of the city. That's your opinion. It is my opinion. And you have proof of her? Well, no. I also have public records requests that haven't been honored yet, but but yeah, All right, there's you. evidence, and I've I've even said don't believe in public record requests to, to verify. Thank you. Anyone else? So uh, going forward, what could you bring to the city to help move things forward? Well, I think um, you know I definitely have the experience of working on such things as like the trash contract, which is a big, that's an important thing because we've ran into issues with that in the past and it's cost the city money. Um, you know, I think that I, you know, <coughs> I can definitely help, uh, you know, with the process of interviewing candidates for the city manager and getting someone in there that's, I think, going to be the best for the city. I mean, we have to think of the city as a whole. It's about 5,000 people in this community. It is not about Right, it's not about your your friends. It's about serving everybody within this community. Um, you know, we I think that I've, we've done a pretty good job in the past with that. I think. Um, so I think that we can, you know, I can definitely attribute to that as well. Um, you know, it, it is tough. I mean, you have to thick skin to be on council. You know, you definitely have to do that because everybody seems to want to be against you or complain about it. It's good to see a lot of faces in the audience. It's whether or not they get involved and participate going forward, not just by voting, but also we got seats, you know, are available on boards and committees. We really could use some help. Those those are supposed to be sounding boards for council members. So what I've also noticed is that council has not been following the procedures. So I can definitely can help get back to that because you know legislation is supposed to be going from you know uh, committees before it gets brought to full council um, and so we need to get back to that the work needs to be done in committee um, we need to that's where we need to encourage people to attend that's where the people's voices are the, the greatest um, and we need to get that work done and we need to bring it to the council at that point those are a few things those are the most important things right now that i see Mr. Taylor, yep. in the past 10 years, have you had any issues that could be brought up after you're put on council that would be against you? I'll be, I'll be. 
have you had any issues with the court's systems? I know where this is going. No, I shouldn't have had any problems with the court systems. If I had problems with the court systems, I think I'd be, you'd see a lot more uh, public docket on that, but you don't. I mean, I'm very, very well the Google search that I'm sure that you've been uh, pushed to, which is fine. Um, but, you know, any issues that I've had with um, a former business of mine or any securities licenses, it's not because I didn't violate any law. So what were you charged with? I wasn't charged with anything. Excuse me, okay. sir, you were charged. I wasn't charged. Okay. I know. Order. Any more questions? So, yes, oh, go ahead. what have you done to repair your relationship with the fire department? Because you apparently have a vendetta there, and you publicly outstayed it in social medias, and right. basically just saying our fire chief. So, I, I gotta wonder about your your uh, agenda coming back into this council. Okay, so I don't. I had a good relationship with our fire department for I don't know, probably half the time. You know, he's been here for nine years, probably. For at least five of those years, I've had a good relationship with them. Mm -hmm. um, maybe six years. It was whenever Chuck Bargy came into town is uh, probably when it started going south. When the fire chief and Bargy decided to commit uh, funds for the city for future years without appropriation of council. And yes, this is pertaining to the command here. So he nor Chuck Bargy had the authority to do that. Um, and so they only council can appropriate future funds of municipalities. Uh, he doesn't, Barty doesn't. The fire chief, you know, he put uh, all of that on the Chuck Barty. He said it raised red flags in a personal conversation with me, but then yet he said nothing because it benefited him. So to me, that's a that's a that's a big mis misnomer. It's completely, you know, it's unethical. Should never happen. Should have. Uh, so, in my opinion, I haven't done anything to try to repair my relationship with him. I think that he's not necessarily doing the best job that he's potentially capable of doing. So, you know, that's. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. No, I don't have a run. That's just. Yeah. 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 I'm just saying he's not. Order. No, I, no to, be, to clarify, I would prefer clarity over agreement. I think he has the capacity to do much better than what he's actually doing. So I'm just saying, but we all do, right? We all should have, you know, room to improve. And if you don't believe that, then you're you're probably a narcissist. I'm just but saying. Can I, can I summarize, Mr. Taylor? Order. Can I summarize and make sure I'm understanding this correctly? You want to come back and write the ship because there are people on council who are working against the city. We're not doing things correctly in committees. And we need to get rid of the fire chief. Is that correct? I didn't yeah. say that. You're putting words in my mouth. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Any more questions? Yes, I have a question. Do you think compromising is a strength or a weakness? I think compromise is definitely a strength. I think being able to, you know, there's seven individuals that have a vote, right? So if you, you're not going to agree on everything. If you have the ability to compromise in, you know, a, a common goal, right? You at least have a common goal together. It doesn't really matter if you get there, you know, going right, right, left, left, right, to the direction you go. Sometimes it's a straight line. It doesn't always work that way. I think being able to compromise and make compromise, as long as it's still for the benefit of the greater good within the community, absolutely. I think that's a great strength. I think being able to, to know what, uh, you know, people will say, you know, if you, you know, admit a weakness or, you know, or admit you're wrong on something that's a weakness, I disagree with that too. I think it's complete strength if you have the ability to say, oh, yeah, I made a mistake and own up to that and take responsibility. I think that's how we all move forward because a lot of times there'll be times where we'll be meeting and not everybody's on the same page. And so, you know, you've got some people that are just going along, going with the flow here. I think, though, that to answer your question very quickly, I think compromise is a great thing. I think it's, it's it's definitely a strength that you have the ability, the fortitude to be able to look beyond your own ego to be able to say, we need to, this is what's best for the community, not what's best for me. You know, I think absolutely that's a, that's a strength. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Thank you, Mr. Taylor. 
then I would compromise into that way uh, a little easier. Amen. But I mean, and that's, that's, I think you have to have you have to have a plan. I was in sales for quite a while, and and God told me you, you gotta you gotta plan your work and then work your plan. And and that's what I think if you, if you come to a, a, a an organization or a council like this and you have some plans, then you work those plans. You might run into somebody that says, Well, what if you do this with that plan? You say, Okay, I'll add that to the plan. So that compromise, yes, but I don't think you should compromise, you know, your uh, your plan for what you uh, have in mind. Uh, thank you to accomplish. Well, John. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry, Mr. Flowers. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Is there anything in your background the past 10 years that could cause you an issue if you were on council? No. I don't <laughs> think so. Not that I remember. I quit drinking six years ago, so four years prior to that. <laughs> considering but not a lot of leadership when you look at a city manager. I look back through the street department and I will say with Jason, what I've met with Jason so on his love for this city is really it's really intrigued me for what he's done and to keep these people intact that he has working for him. He's got a great crew. But you know we've been sitting there eight years, eight different managers. How would you like to try to work under that? Not knowing are we going to get fired are we being respected? What's going to happen in the city? I mean, that's gone on for eight years. I don't know how I'd react with that many different type of bosses. People telling you what to do. So this has to stop in the media. Now, what I'm going to do is, I've never really done this. And quite frankly, I'm kind of proud of myself. <laughs> I'm going to give you my resume and tell you why I think I should be on the city council. That's the question I was going to ask. So, I'm going to go for it. So, I'm going to take a little time. 1969, myself, Mike Nolan, and Rick Arenas, these are some names that people know. We went to Cleveland to see the CEO of CO, CNO Railroad to try to get these tracks donated for the Scenic Railroad. We drove up on our own dime. We went to see this gentleman. Probably the finest office I've ever seen in my life. And um, to talk to him about giving these tracks to the city. He said to us, said, you know, we're a public company. I just can't give things away. I have to go through a chain of command here. But he said, I know what you're talking about. Well, let me see what we can do. 
So he come back down. I got a call from him. He actually had a daughter going to OU. Now this gentleman was so high up that he actually had you know guards around him. We just uh, we went to the 12th floor. We went over to the right. Had to go up to the 13th floor. That was his whole office on this. And he was um, he was the man. I met him in the lot over here. And Jerry Ballard, who started the Scenic Railroad, a lot of people probably don't remember that name. He sat down with us and he said, yes, I can get that done. We, we can we get those tracks. And that's how we got started with the Scenic Railroad. And Mr. Noel, a lot of people probably don't know, might know him for over 30 years, donated his time, free of charge, for the Scenic Railroad, for any type of, anything they needed legally. He did it for nothing. He donated the lumber for the, for the actual railroad station you see today. Mr. Nolan. So these are, that's one thing we started on. Then I was contacted back in the late 70s by um, Baird Stewart, uh, Wib Warren, and Arlene Powell, Sue Powell's mother, who worked for Baird Stewart for many years. And they asked me to, they wanted to, and they, they were talking about this new thing with this Baird Foundation. I didn't really, I knew a little bit about it, but I wasn't sure how it worked. I didn't understand. You know, once he uh, you know put this money into some type of uh, uh, you know, an escrow and it, and it could be the interest spent, I wasn't sure any of that was what was about. So I went out and and I I I went down to Maysville, Kentucky, to call it was Main Street, and they just started their project. They had the same problem we had. The light poles were starting to bend in. They had wires all over the downtown. They had curbs that were terrible. They had sidewalks that were terrible. They had uh, street lights that were terrible. And they came to this town and we got them hired. They went around, they took pictures of every building around the square from the north to the south of Washington Street and Columbus Street. And then they, they come in and we had maybe 25 of those billboards showing each, each building what it was and what it could be. Now, a lot of it had to do with painting and fixing up, making sure that, you know, they always said every so often someone's going to paint something. You sure don't want them to paint the building downtown Elkville paint. I remember he told me that. <laughs> so they did the different colorations, how you see the buildings kind of today. So we started that project and we got myself, uh, Clinton Critchfield was a contractor at the time. He was our service director at one time. And uh, <clears throat> there was Dave Fredericks, there was uh, the Maurer boys, um, Leo McFadden. Mr. Nolan's home, we collected 13,000 star bricks, 13,000, to do these sidewalks and so on. And it was really, it was interesting. I even had people pull up one time at grandfather's store, and the lady said, I've got some bricks for you, Mr. Brooks. I went out, and she had two. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I took them. I took them, and I put them in the store. We would have those ready, and we started that whole project. We did the lights. When the lights came in, they were, they had some type of a coating on them. We painted those lights in the old tartan building at night, all of us. Doug Juniper actually wired for free. This was all free. And we started that. And then we got Jim Edward. And Jim took, we used to have all those different wires running around the square. And we brought them down, we put them under the road, and brought them up in the middle square, as you know, today to take care of the lighting in the interior. They took care of the fountain and so on and so forth. So that was my contribution to that whole deal. And it was a long time. But I'd go and Arnold would, they would write the check. It would come you know, through the city like it does today. And then we would pay you know, the people for the lights and for so on and all the late. So we did all that. <laughs> then I was sitting one day with Dave Fredericks. And Dave said, you know, the old Sahai station is sitting right across the building the street from um, our uh, opera house. He said, it's just falling down. We can't get anybody, we can't buy it. We want to buy it. It looks terrible. I said, it does. I said, he said, I can't get anybody to call me back. I said, well, let me see what I can do. So I get a hold of, of, of the CEO in Dayton, Ohio, who was over this particular district. And I wrote him a letter and I said, look, I'm on this foundation, the beautiful beautification of Nelson. And I'm just telling you, people in town, they're going to get the Columbus papers down here. They're going to get people to take pictures of this, and it looks like a mess. And they're going to drag you all through the mud. He <laughs> said, so, I don't want that. <laughs> okay. I drove up, again, on my own dime. I wrote him a check on my own personal account for $27,000. I came back, 
And Dave and Whip said, hey, uh, uh, that's a little too much, so we don't, we don't want to do it that way. <laughs> I said, wait a minute, you told me to get a bot. <laughs> you take me back. <laughs> Never kidding. And they take me back to the Barrett Foundation. So, you know, I'm just giving you a few things, you know, how we got here. And, and could I be good for this position? I think I could, I could do a great job. I love this city. I love the people in the city, and I believe in the city. But I'm not going to let the city go down. You know, we worked hard. My dad was on city council for over 30 years. He, his name is on the old sewer plant today. And once they tear that down, hopefully we can get that sticker plaque and so on. So I think I'm the best man for this job for this, uh, you know, six months, you know. Now, a clear couple of things. I don't live, I, I do not live in Florida. I have a condo there, but I don't live there. I go there. And hell, I go to Buckeye Lake, too, because I've been a place there for 32 years, but I don't live there. So I don't want anybody to think, you know, that that's my rest. Now, Florida should be. I save myself a lot of money, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to vote right here. So, um, and talking about Hawking College, I'm on board at Hawking College. I realize I would abstain if something come across this. Um, in the city council. The only thing that's come recently was the ballpark down here that they talked about maybe leasing at that time. But that didn't go through, which I still think was a little different. You could have saved yourself $12,000 to have a hockey college cut the grass. You have one game a year, the old, old set, one a year. They didn't want hockey to use it. And in another 10 years, those old settlers would all be gone. So you cut that grass for the rest of your life. Yeah. <laughs> so that, you know that made no sense. But they're building their own, so don't worry about that. They're going to build their own. They're going to go forward. Been on that board for eight years. So that's my resume that I have to take this job. Who's got questions? I've got one. Yes, uh, Chief Timms at one time had applied for a spot on council. And right. she had to give up that appointment because of the public contracts between the two organizations. Have you checked into that? Have I? Yes. As long as I've saying just being on this on on on, on the Nelsonville uh, council, I I don't work for. I don't get paid by Hawking College, so I see no conflict there at all. Okay. She was the police chief, and they have a mutual agreement. So that's why there was. Do you have anything in your past, sir? I started, as a matter of fact, I started with William Birch Shoe Company in 1966. And I am, yeah. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Are you associated with them on the board? No, ma'am. Okay. Would you, what is your position? Right now, I'm the. Uh, I'm over all of the obsolete materials and obsolete footwear that we get rid of today. So when we when we close out a line of shoes or boots or so on, I sell those off to discount them. If something came up that dealt with rocky boots and you were on council, I would say from any of that. Sure, I would. You know, I know that. I the more I you know, I wouldn't. Um, just put up saying, I'll say a friend of mine just to give you a little background. A friend of mine on the board, Hawking College. Is doing a project in New Lex, and he's had to abstain because the property is actually owned by Hawking. So I, I do understand. Any more questions? Yeah, I'll ask the same question. <laughs> do you think compromising is a strength or a weakness? I've compromised my whole life, <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's the only way to go. You're but right. I'm telling you, sitting right here, I'm here for the betterment of this community. I have no personal gain. I got nothing in this other than I want this town to flourish. Right now, we don't look that good on paper. I can tell you, as an outsider. I have spent 32 years in Buckeye Lake. I walk and I constantly get this question. What the hell's going on with your town down there? What's going on? 
You guys want to make your door. They're, they're right. They're right. This gentleman shouldn't be running this town. He should be running the police department. I said it before. I said it three or four weeks ago. You got this $22 million sewer plant you're putting in down there. What, do you have to run him down after he's already wrecked somebody? Say, hey, can you get a change order? Can I show this to you? We look stupid. We need to get a city manager. Yeah. This gentleman back here promotes this town like I've never seen it promoted. He brings people in this town. They spend money in this town. He yes. makes a good, yes. when you talk to him, he makes a good appearance. Yep. That's what we have to have. We're just sitting here and we're the laughing stock of Southern Ohio. Mm -hmm. You got nobody running. Nobody. He works. He got a full time job. Tony does. I mean, when he's running down after he's working on somebody's refrigerator, he said, hey, you mind taking a look at this? There's a change order. You know. I mean, seriously. Everything else runs very well here. I think. I said it with Harry. I've said it with Jason. I've said it with the police department. The buck stops right here. And I'm sorry, but you know, after two times and then the third time you come back on the council, I I, 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 I can't go that. I, I, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. If I'm going to be in here, I'll be here for those six months. I'll tell you right off that, I'm not running like Johnny is again. This is it. I'm up for you. I'm done. But I will tell you, you won't find anybody in this community to think, and I'll tell you about the park too, real quick. Now you mentioned, I'm mentioning this the Greyhound Park. I am very proud of that. Very proud of it. And I'll tell you what got me there. I'll tell you. I went down when they had the wreck. We lost that officer. My mother in law and father in law was in that particular wreck. And I was down there, and I saw the police department, and I knew they had another run. Someone come down, there's a disturbance up one of those houses, the white one, where they're always having problems. They're always having some type of fight up there, and those people were just nothing but trice living there. You got a $22 million high school that you put in. It's beautiful. And you got that piece of shit right across from it. <laughs> and that's what it was. And they come up, and they said, they said that, um, we got to go down there, but we have this officer and so on. And, and Hawking College pulled up, and Hawking College said, we'll take care of it. We'll take care of it. You stay here. We'll run down there. And I saw him down there. I thought to myself, I said to my wife, we got to do something. That, that's a crime. We got to get that bot and make it into some type of a park or something. That was my whole motivation of that. And the people in Nelsonville, a lot of great people put in, and they bought what, we, what you know as the Smitty's Golf Station. They bought it for Mr. Hartley, and he gave us a great price. And the checks were made out to Mr. Hartley, not to me. And once they all gathered up at Nelson Home and Savings, they sent them to Mr. Hartley. Is that true? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> My wife and I, we spent the other $25,000. And I'll tell you something else. I wasn't going to do this, but you know what? I got the damn keys. You know what these are, too? They're too for the shit sacks for the dogs. <laughs> I told them off. There. You know what? Forty-two dollars and fifty cents to buy those are refilled. So don't tell me I don't care about this thing. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
All right, so we have the second one. All right, this is for uh, Corey Taylor. Corey Taylor. Call the roll, ma'am. Mr. Clement? Yes. Yes. No. All right, for Mr. Brooks. Tingle? Yes. Mr. Duffy? No. Uh, Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Booth? No. Ms. Sonic? Yes. Mr. Clement? No. Oh, unbelievable. Oh. <clears throat> Ridiculous. All right. So I guess we can assume you'll be appointing Corey Taylor next week. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> <laughs> you'll see nothing. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, <sighs> so ridiculous. Yeah. All right. So comments. Uh, three <laughs> minutes per person. Must be a resident of the community. And you know, please state your name and your address. Lynn Bishop, 1080 Borough Boulevard. Mr. Bishop, Mr. Bishop, I was here to the last meeting that we had two weeks ago, <clears throat> along with everybody else here. And we were here for one reason. To have uh, <clears throat> Mr. Rebel back in his seat as city manager. Uh, what he, he he had come back 24 hours before 24 hours to uh, want his seat back. Other people have done this. I think uh, maybe Mr. Clement at one time. Somebody, this has happened before. <laughs> okay. So it's, I think that's why everybody's here today. And uh, this is the citizens of the town that you serve. And uh, I hope that this can be settled because we kept hearing Mr. Toy's name. Mr. Toy's not here. We'll yeah. Oh, yes. that's yeah. Right. Last time you were? I know. I had that governor. Okay. You that's better look at me. You were. <laughs> no. But, anyways, he's scared tonight. So, I think if we can get this settled in front of all of these citizens of Nelsonville that we'd like to do that tonight, and nobody jump up and be like, Mr. Dunphy did last time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we right. want it uh, settled. We want Mr. Rule. Do I pronounce your name right? That's a funny one to pronounce. Roll. I'll call you Roll. Bernie. Roll. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, and that's why we're here tonight. And you know, uh, Stuart, uh, thank you so much for that railroad. Oh, you're welcome. You know, it did sit there for a long time before anything happened. Sure. People kind of forgot about it, you sure. know. But, anyways, People love to come here. I can tell you that for a fact to ride that. No, that railroad. Yeah. And my sister, uh, you know her well. Okay. And they come in there and they keep coming back to. Uh, and she serves in peace and they love her. So, and they just love to come ride that railroad. You know, he, she said, my goodness, it goes up the backyards of people and it just goes, you know, no, they don't care. They love it. So we thank you for that and, uh, so much. But I just hope that we can get this settled tonight. I probably had a lot more wrote down here, but this, whatever happened with him that night, it was a bad situation. I've probably done it myself. But anyways, within 24 hours, he said, no, I want there. These people wanting there. So please let's have that settled tonight. Tonight. Mm -hmm. I got it. Stuart Brush, 123 East Columbus Street. No. But I don't understand this why we would back when we had Tracy Galloway in here and she was Tony are you you related to uh, Keller Blackburn correct or by by marriage marriage okay Tracy was brought here by Keller to be brought to city council that's her statement it was recommended by her by him yeah mm -hmm. he lives in Athens Keller does mm -hmm. not Nelsonville he doesn't run Nelsonville so we bring her in here and we have 
big conflict with her allowing a trailer just to be brought into this town. And she should ask somebody before she made that particular decision. I don't see why she would benefit us when this gentleman has a huge business That's in this right. community. Amen. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And the other problem we have in this town is we have a ton of HUD rentals in this town. Mm -hmm. How many rentals do you have today? Uh, HUD? Just yeah, rentals. I can't that. But, oh, okay. okay. If you're rentals, how many do yeah. you have? I know. Let's, let's keep going. Let's, you know, well, I'm just trying to figure out here what, you know, when I say I have no personal reasons, you know, we're sitting with what, whatever he has, whatever you have, or Nick, what Blackburns have, in this whole town. We're becoming the town of just, you want people to move in here? You want people to come to this town? Who would do that? Who would come here to live? Answer me that. Amen. I don't know. <laughs> so it, you know, it seems to me that we have some conflict here. Very much so. So I'd ask this council that's going forward, we should look into that because I don't think that's working for this community at all. And you can't make me believe that one of those are in your area or in your neighborhood. That it doesn't reduce the property value that you have. Ask that question. It's it's really bad. Mm -hmm. You're going downhill. Yep. This town's run by four people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Sad. <laughs> Anybody else want to make one? I got a quick one. Go ahead. <laughs> Can't stop you, Joey. <laughs> <laughs> My, my, mine's an easy one, guys. Neil Summers had a, a meeting planned for this Saturday at the library. It is still on. It's from 10 until noon. Refreshments will be served, and anybody is welcome to come there and say things that you would like to see happen in Luxembourg. And anybody can come. The last time we had a meeting, there were only like six people there. They were really first, but you know what? Honest to goodness. Everybody listened to everybody and they got along. That's all. Wow. That's refreshing. Yeah. Anyone else? You're up. You're up. Okay. All right. Hey, John Bernie, we're all, are you a citizen of the community? Are you a residential? Citizen? Listen, we've had other people tell me make public comments. Sit down. No, I'm not going to sit down. What? what? Oh. what? Whoa. Other people who are not yeah. citizens make public comments. Oh my are you, God. What are you worried about, Tony? I'm not worried about anything. Well, then, let's you must be. Business and organizational comments are next. So, I've got a few talking points. I, I wasn't sure which direction I wanted to go tonight with my comments, and clearly, we have a council that's divided. I mean, they, they show it all the time. Uh, you know, I witnessed it, you know, as the city manager uh, when, I, when I was uh, in that role. Um, and, you know, it's probably gonna go in the direction that Tony wants it to go. Um, so I guess the question I have is why? Why? Yeah. Yeah. Why was nothing yeah. done to accept my rescinding of my resignation? Why was a council meeting not called immediately after getting the legal opinion from Bob Toy to make a decision on his legal opinion? It is a legal opinion that council can talk about and then make a decision on it. It doesn't have to be acted on, just like the legal opinion that I provided to Bob Toy didn't have to be acted on. But apparently wasn't relevant. You know, it was it was clear, you know, from the executive council meeting that I was in where I need your uh, resign because of the environment that was 
created by a particular person who the meeting was supposed to be about. You know, he called, called me out in my office that I was being manipulated by certain council members and that the majority of the council felt the same way. Well, at the time, you know, it was Dan, Neil, Glenda, and Nancy. They never indicated to me that they felt I was being manipulated. I told Tony when he came into my office that when I first took the position, that I wasn't going to be manipulated. I wasn't going to have somebody force an agenda on me. You know, we worked together as a team. And there were numerous times that I tried to make sure that we maintained order in those executive sessions back there because of a certain person's outburst. I mean, he's gone after and attacked other people uh, on council as well. So does any, any council member have a say? Because apparently when the... Uh, Tony made the call to get a legal opinion. Uh, your three minutes are up. No, I'm, yes. I'm going to finish this. You know, there, there, was, no, there was no discussion over uh, what was going to be taking place. The, the, the city position. Point of order. The, the each city position gets position, three minutes, Mr. Roll. The city your three minutes are up. Do you what? want to be removed? Is <laughs> anybody same situation? Is yeah. 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 my three minutes. Well, you don't have the three minutes. He has three minutes. Anybody else wants to come up? They have three minutes. You're not special, Mr. Roll. You're not a citizen. We let you speak. You have three minutes. You're done. Finish it in the business. Because you are a businessman. Finish it in the business. So you don't have to disturb a public meeting. Please do that, sir. Thank you. He is not disturbing. Please sit down. Your three minutes is up. We are why, why was it that Scott Frank order. Um, se September order October 2nd okay resigned so. in writing right. and no action was taken order with regards to his I don't Mr. Royal, I'm going to read you 2917.12 yeah. disturbing a lawful meeting you do any act which obstructs or interferes with the due conduct of such meeting Every citizen, uh -huh. you're not a citizen, we gave you three minutes. Now you can sit down. If you have somebody else to say something, you can do it. Otherwise, you may subject yourself to a criminal charge yeah, no. of disturbing a lawful meeting. Do you understand that? Anybody want to read this? Thank you. Yeah. Go ahead, your manifesto, pass it out. Yeah. Thank you. Next person. Three minutes. Three minutes. Just any we can start the timer now. Does the council not have any say in any of this? Is this, is this just Dumpy's decision? At the end of the day, that seems yes. to be yes. that yeah, it. Yep. Regardless of what the community wants, yep. the fact that y'all were elected by the community mm -hmm. to what? To govern for them, to make their wishes come true, to bring the town up from where it is now. Mm -hmm. Yes. Y'all have not done that because what? Mm -hmm. You're more concerned with making whatever happiness you want for yourself and your friends yep. instead yep. of yep. 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 the council's only, only concern should ever be. How can we make Nelsonville a better place to live? How can we bring the families back into this community so that we can rebuild it? It should not be, well, I got to get my friends on council so that I can get what I want. That's what we got. As I said, council. Yes, compromise is good, but not right. when you're compromising down. Right. When you're compromising right. so that the person that has no interest in helping Nelsonville get what they want. That's not compromise. That's bowing yeah. down. That's cowardice. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And at some point, it has to stop. It has gone on long enough. It took me one month to be here to see it. Yeah. I know everyone here sees it. Yep. Yeah. 
I don't understand. And the fact that you don't let this man speak, you are, he's the only one that you timed. And yeah. why was that? That's because you were afraid exactly. of what he was going to say. Yeah. We don't know it, yeah. don't we? Yeah. We don't know yeah. it. There was another person that was, that resigned, was a friend, yeah. Scott Frank. He resigned. He actually wrote a resignation letter and turned it in. Was it accepted? No, no. because mm -hmm. you didn't want him to leave. Oh, no, everybody. Because he was doing a great job taking funds and services from the city for his own benefit. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. So, my God, let's run to the because he was so That's damn. Fine. Great. Oh, no, that was fine. So that you do not let a man with integrity lead this town is amazing to me. That's good. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And you can sit there and smile and smirk. That's great. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we as a community yeah. will do mm -hmm. what we have to do to make sure that this town will go forward forward in the right way, forward to make Nelsonville better, not worse. That's all I have to say. Anybody else want to read? Welcome to Hudville. Yeah. Um, yeah. Business and organizational comments. Yeah, I got a third. Go on. Mm -hmm. Tim Blackburn, one of the ones for now. I was a HUD resident. Right. I come here because I've been here back for four months. I've been gone for 20 years and I've had numerous things stolen. My house broken into. And it's not always, you know, the. Hey, I'm the red guy in black and some furniture, so he he organizes everything. This one, and I come in here and it's like a bunch of high school girls. There's so many different groups divided. It's sad. I actually watched this watch this meeting. It is, yeah, it is. Yes. 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 I mean, I care about who knows me a lot. I saw this on here. Four people, uh, really. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I want what's good for everybody. You're right. I mean, I'm a great guy. Everybody in here has good qualities. It's just everybody's butting heads. Ever kills the bits, little things. Mm -hmm. I mean, your your main bug is shit. I mean, for no reason. That's what it is. Oh, however, I'm just saying, you know, I want I want things to change for everybody to come in. I mean, we ain't gonna be perfect. You know, if you can laugh, cry, smile, whatever, and you might be pissed about everything, but and and when the day ends, you know, if we're all on the same page, and you know, nothing's gonna ever be done. You know, what we need to do is actually sit down, and use our brains together instead of button heads. And we'll get some more things done. Don't do it. I mean, it's not it's not that hard to sit down and say, hey, you know, what is it that we can do to make things better? And then yeah. say, I have to take ideas. I mean, they give you ideas. Just listen. I don't know who's doing what's what, but obviously there is a divided line between some people who need to be on the on council. Thank you. Thank you. Monday, Friday, 5 30 to the half hour for each one, like I talked about. Email. Monday, Friday, Monday, Friday, Monday, 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 so, um, we can do parks and rec at 5 30. And then six would be town of Lemon Street. Yeah. And six thirty would be. And I want to say this is going to happen. You just share. Uh, already seven. Seven. They've already been here. Yeah. Fix the fire. And then seven, 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 all right, department yeah. update. Yeah. 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 Call the state. Yeah, call the state. We have code. Yeah. Code's not yeah. here. 
So for the month of May, we had 401 calls for service. We conducted 42 traffic stops, issued 19 citations to three accident reports, a 10 criminal arrests, and 16 warrant arrests. We're still short four officers. Um, I'll be interviewing someone tomorrow that will be still positioned in the near future. Um, we had our civil service test a week or two ago. Had five people test, three, I'm sorry, six people test, four passed. Of those two are already employed, it's the passer civil service test and re employed. Um, the person I'm interviewing tomorrow has already passed their civil service test, so uh, probably do well in the interview and can pass the medical exam for insurance purposes and stuff. We might be able to start in the future. And then we'll settle down with three officers. That's all I got for this part for now. Any questions for Chief Collin? No. All right, uh, we need to amend the agenda to add ordinance 37 23 and 38 23. Okay, second. Second. Yes. Chairman? Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, ordinance 37 23. I need someone to introduce it, please. I will. Thank you. An ordinance approving wastewater treatment plant phase two change order seven for Nelsonville Regional Collection yes. System Project and declaring an emergency. Whereas the city of Nelsonville has entered into a phase two wastewater treatment plant contract, whereas additional changes to the contract are recommended in order to complete the contract, whereas this will be change order seven for this project. Whereas the purpose of the change order is to cover the costs of various changes, including an electrical breaker change, installation of additional bollards to protect one end from flood building, and to remove dead or dying trees that could fall on the new structure or fence in the future. Whereas there is sufficient contingency grant money available to fund this change order, whereas the change will increase the contract price by 23000 $742.60, and it's summarized as attached to the Now, therefore, be ordained by the Council of the City of Nelsonville, Athens County, Ohio, as follows. The City of Nelsonville hereby approves change order 7 for the Phase 2 wastewater treatment plant contract, as described in Exhibit 1, attached to two, and incorporated into this ordinance as if we were the contract price will be increased by a sum of $23,742.60. The change order is to cover the cost of various changes, including an electrical breaker change, installation of additional ballers to protect, protect one end from flood building, and to remove dead or dying trees that could fall on the new structure or fence in the future. The additional cost is $23,742.60. Acting City Manager Devin Tolliver shall have the authority to enter into, accept, and or authorize the contract change order seven for phase two wait, wastewater treatment plant contract as shown in the exhibit A. This ordinance is being passed as an emergency measure pursuant to Ohio Revised Code 731.3, Article 4, Section 4.09 through 4.11, as an emergency in the operation of the city government and is necessary for the immediate preservation of the public peace, health, safety, morals, or welfare of the city. And this ordinance shall be in full force and effect upon its adoption. Really enacted by council on first reading under the suspension of the rule, the 12th day of June, 2023. Okay. Any council discussion on said matter? Mr. Betts, do you have anything to add? No, I'm not sure that I answer any questions. Anybody got any Okay. All right, motion to suspend. 
Robusta. Check the Robusta. That's right. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 Motion to adopt. So moved. Phase three sewer project and declaring an emergency. Whereas the city of Nelsonville has entered into a contract for the Nelsonville Regional Collection Phase three sewer project, whereas additional changes to the contract are recommended in order to complete the contract. Whereas the purpose of this change order is to resolve various utility conflicts preventing the completion of the work. Or as the change order also includes replacing the failed water line under Canal Street along Monroe that was leaking into the sewer system. Or as this will be change order two for this project. Or as the change will increase the contract price by $93,069.96 and is summarized as attached in exhibit one. Or as the funds will be drawn from the contingency portion of the project in which there is enough to cover the increased price. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the Council of the City of Nelsonville, Athens County, Ohio, as follows. The City of Nelsonville hereby approves change order two for the Nelsonville Regional Collection Phase Three Sewer Project contract as described in Exhibit One, attached hereto and incorporated into this ordinance as if rewritten fully within. The contract price will be increased by a sum of $93,069.96. The change Include the following. Remove and replace six inch existing water line running through unknown existing sanitary manhole under an existing storm tunnel, water tunnel totaling $63,483.45. Monroe Street relocation of existing water line due to elevation conflict with the new storm sewer totaling $9,327.65. Raise the elevation height of the new generator pad, totaling $5,806.81. <coughs> Relocate the water on Monroe and Meyer Street due to elevation conflict, totaling $10,310.90. Cast in place a new catch basin in a, to accommodate three existing <coughs> storm sewers, totaling $4,141.15. 4, Acting City Manager Devin Tolliver shall have the authority to enter into, accept, and or authorize the change contract change order to for Nelsonville Regional Collection Phase 3 Sewer Project contract as shown in Incident 1. This ordinance is being passed as an emergency measure pursuant to ORC 731.30, Article 4. Section 4.09 to 4.11 as an emergency in the operation of the city government and is necessary for the immediate preservation of the public peace, health, safety, and moral or welfare of the city. And this ordinance shall be in full force and effect upon its adoption. The Council on First Reading under the suspension of the rules on the 12th day of June 2023. Any council discussion on said matter? Mr. Betts, the only one I have an issue with is the raising of the new. Uh, generator pad yeah. to elevations. Uh, was not the elevation correct on the original print? Uh, we had to raise it uh, higher than the floodplain. We uh, didn't have that high and realized that we could work about that. I mean, isn't that part of the first go down now? Having the correct elevations on that? Uh, looking back, we'd like to have the elevations higher than the floodplain. Do like you not know the floodplain now? Uh, so we put it at the same height as the existing station over there. Uh, so that's how we got it. So we thought it'd be safer to get it up above the potential flood. Well, no doubt. When this is down, will Monroe Street be repaid? Yes. Uh, the portion is disturbed by the project. Okay. And then the, the last portion from Fayette to Columbus, the city's favorite, while the pavers are there. Okay. 
And if I may add, just uh, the big portion of that, we found the leak in Waterline under Canal Street. So we asked the contractor for the, for the price uh, to do that work. So we're going to get a new water line installed from the north side of the canal along Monroe all the way to Myers. So uh, that'll be a good uh, benefit of this project as well. EPA's already approved that. Size line, six inches. Pardon me. Size line? Uh, six inches. Six inches. That's the 63,000. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It was leaking pretty badly. <coughs> Any other questions? Yeah. I have some general questions, but not with the ordinance, so I'll wait until after that. Okay. All right. Um, any more council discussion with that ordinance? Motion to suspend. So moved. Second. Yes. Yes. Mr. Chairman? Yes. 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 Motion to adopt. So moved. Second. <laughs> Ms. Nagel? Yes. Mr. Dumpy? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Booth? Yes. Ms. Sonny? Yes. Mr. Kent? Yes. I have a couple of questions. Go ahead. For Mr. Betts. Yes. So, um, are there scheduled rate increases on the sewer for 23, 24, 25? Yes. Um, I don't have the specifics. I cannot give you specifics, but I can tell you the history of what we recommend for rate increases. Uh, Curtis Strickland, with Ohio RCAP, uh, Rural Community, Community Assistance Program, uh, at the beginning of this project, worked with uh, Mr. Sappington. <laughs> And uh, city city council to uh, recommend rate increases uh, that will cover the project. They did projections up front when we started mm -hmm. all this, and council's been enacting some of those rates. I know over the years uh, since the start. Again, I don't know the exact figures, but they looked at percentages. I would have to follow up with specific information on that. Okay. Um, at this point, what is the full amount of investment of the property? What is the cost of the plan? The plan itself, so there's, there, I want to be clear, there's three different phases mm -hmm. potentially going before. Um, the plan itself, construction was 16 and a half million was the base bid. You add in engineering and uh, all the other miscellaneous costs, it was roughly $18 million. Um, but there was other <coughs> phases. The first phase, well, my memory here is, bear with me. Sure. Um, <coughs> it was probably three, two, $6 million in phase one, and we're underway in phase three right now, which is another uh, $4 million. So uh, you add all that up, it's in the high 20s, $1 million. Okay. And I would say, uh, again, just rough rough estimate, that's probably 60 plus percent funded agreement. So, right. Is the Fort Street project still on the waterline? Go in the backside? Of the it is, so we had bid openings. Um, um back in late April. Good Friday. Pardon me? Good Friday. It was a good Friday. Um I recommended to council a meeting or two about uh tentative award to DB Weber upon the uh, funding becoming uh, uh finalized. Uh, it's just a process that goes through there, it's just uh, uh formalities, and that just happens. We're actually uh signing contracts tomorrow. He wants to get started, so to give you an idea, um I would what did you say July 1st? He wants to be started. Somewhere in July, we can see construction starting. Will the street be completely closed, or will it be one lane? Or is, where's the water line running? On which one? Fourth Street. Fourth Street is up the right side, most of the way, and we'll have one lane of traffic. Where it's going to get interesting is where you get on Pleasant View because it's so narrow. Right is it going to follow the Pleasant View? It follows Pleasant View. So that'll be closed. Yeah. Yeah, but we'll get, uh, we always have them get citizens access or residents access to their own right there. Okay. Those, there'll be any means. Uh, okay. um, do you have a projected completion date for the treatment plant? Yes, we uh, we're past due. The uh, weather control center we were waiting on the big electrical components. I've spoken about a couple times arrived today. And the wiring is going to take them a couple weeks to get it uh, completed. Wire. There's so much electric going out that it powers the entire plant. Um, there's a good month and a half of startups of all the various equipment we have to get vendors in for each piece of the equipment, the screen, uh, the treatment tank, the clarifiers, the V system. All those uh, pieces, of, pieces of equipment require a factory training startup and then training for city personnel. Bottom line, with all that 
taking place. We're hoping in August to have sewage flowing to the new plant uh, to complete the startup. And uh, hopefully September 1st, we're, we're treating sewage down there. Um, from there, it's a matter of working out the bugs. There will be bugs, you know, getting everything started up at 16 that they got facility. Um, I can also tell you that the existing sewer plant, they've got a demolition subcontractor uh, on board for that. They say 10 days, then we'll, we'll have it down. So with all that said, um, I'd like to say by Halloween, we'll be wrapping it up completely when we close out the door. Stuff. One other question. I'm assuming that you'll be able to take samples to um, test for COVID and other issues. <clears throat> oh, yeah, you certainly can. Um, that's not. I don't know how complicated that was. You just, what, it, what the process is. Yeah, so the, the operators would do, they do grab samples on the effluent and then probably the influent. Actually, there's automatic samplers for the influent. They're required by the EPA to sample for certain parameters, suspended solids. Uh, C CBOD, things like that. Um, in their grab samples, it'd be easy to uh, send it off to a certain place that would uh, uh, do the analysis. With them. That'd be the trick. Plan in that. So I know, with that said, I know a lot of universities uh, have been doing that since 2020. So uh, if the city's interested in that, that's probably where I reach out to one of the universities about that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. All right, any more questions? Okay. Good in the order. Mr. Clement, I'll see you in Yeah, so I attended the Athens County Regional Planning Commission last week. I learned that there's going to be some more state money coming for demolishing some houses to the land bank. Um, so let's keep an eye on that. I've spoken with Goodwill. We're going to set up a couple of donation bins here in town. Um, there will be one set up here at City Hall and then another at Holly Field, um, which is going to be kind of a trial run for now to see how it goes and make sure everyone you know, keeps them clean and it doesn't become a big mess. <coughs> they pretty well assure me that they keep them clean and that you know, it's not going to be an issue with people being trash around them and they do pretty well. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, that's all I have right now. Can I add to that? Uh, yeah. The, the, the guy who's overseeing it comes through Nelsonville once a day and is going to stop and check both of them, make sure there's nothing outside of them. And if somebody would have, they, they redesigned these boxes and they're six foot tall. Yeah. And the hole is at the top. It's to make sure that people can't climb into them. The way they're designed, <laughs> you can't. If, uh, the, if homeless or something try to get in, they can't, there's no way for them to get into them. Mm -hmm. So just add that on top of what you can't get out. <laughs> <laughs> I've also spoke to the uh, is app and talking transit. We're going to try and set up some actual bus signs for where stops are going to be at in town. I don't know if anyone's familiar with it, but currently, anyone wanting to ride the bus. Just kind of walks down Canal Street along their route and waves at the bus driver to get them to stop. So we're going to work on making some actual bus stops. Good the order, Mr. Clement. I don't have anything. Just take it. I hope after hearing everything that was said today that. When the decision is made for the new council member, you take it all into, into consideration. Amen. That's right. Mm -hmm. And thank you to all of you for showing up tonight and supporting council. We need all the support we can get. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we understand. Mm -hmm. that. And a bottle of wine. No. Okay. Yeah. I, my son is applying for the FBI Academy. Uh, he is a Air Force and Security Forces right now. So that's the only thing I got going on. Mr. Sherman. So I just want to ask the citizens to, you know, glad you're getting involved. And you need to stay involved because nothing's going to change unless you don't get involved. Uh, We'd have to go through the state. Contact the state if you need to. Yep. If, nobody, if nobody can respond to you here, then contact the state. 
Can you contact the state about that? Yeah, contact the state about anything. Okay. Okay. Uh, I thought for sure the state needs to come in. Have uh, something done about that. Mm -hmm. uh, in regards to the bus stops, uh, I would like to give full credit to Neil Summers, who was on the council prior. He was the one that actually went and set that all up. Mm -hmm. So it came after the fact on this. Mm -hmm. Just want to make sure everyone knows it. Thank you. Um, motion to go to executive session for 121 uh, 22 for some personnel and legal matters and some lawsuits. So, please. So moved. Second. Um, yes. Sherman? No, I am not going in the kill room. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 A show of hands. How many councilmen? Mary Ann's man, you're out of order. Oh, oh come on. Did you get a second? Yes. Yes. Make a motion. Let's vote on it. Yes. 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 Yes.